to Ephesians 5, and we're going to read verses 22 to 31. Ephesians 5, verses 22 to 31. And like I was saying before, like in Genesis, like Genesis 3, and it was saying that a woman going to have a heart with birth, and a husband going to rule over thee. You know, that, that's true. And it's, like you said, it's been going on since then. But just because a husband have a rule over his wife, that don't mean they should take advantage of it. You know, I know guys get married or whatever, or just have a relationship with a woman, and they just feel like whatever he say goes. And like I said, it's, it's you can't abuse that. We're going to find out, too, it's an order of things in this lesson. So we're going to read Ephesians 5, verse 22 to 31. Ephesians 5, verse 22. We're going to start at verse 22. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So you see right here that the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. And like I said, you know, guys misuse that and, and abuse that. They don't mean that you make your wife into a slave and you mistreat her. Because we're going to find out also that you love your wife as you love yourself. So don't twist the scriptures. Like I said, we know that the guy, the uh, male is over the female. He's come through his relationship, to his marriage. But it's still an order of things. And you can't abuse that. Verse 24. Therefore, as, church, as the church is the subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Verse 25. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church, and give himself for it. So you supposed to love the wife, even as Christ loved the church. So, you know, you can't just do just anything and everything to your wife. You treat her the way you want to treat her. You love her as you love yourself. So if you love yourself, you wouldn't hit yourself. You wouldn't beat yourself. You wouldn't talk abusive to yourself. So why do you do your wife like that? So. You can't look at the scriptures and say, well, I'm over my wife, I'm over the woman. I have to do what I want to do. It, just, it don't work like that. It does not work. That's called abuse. Verse 26. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself as a glorious church, having yet having not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 28. So ought man to love their wives as their own bodies. He that love his wife love it himself. So you treat your wife the same way you treat yourself. You know, I know you love yourself. People, you gotta love yourself. If you love yourself, then you're gonna love your wife, you're gonna treat her the same way. Now it's a different story. It's something wrong with you if you don't love yourself and you just abusing yourself, then you're abusing your wife, then I mean there's something wrong with that bitch. But overall, if you love yourself, you're gonna treat your wife the same way. You're not going to, no spot, no blemish, you're not going to, you know, mis misuse or mistreat her any kind of way. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. So, you're not going to hate your own flesh, you're going to nourish it and you're going to cherish it, according to the scriptures. And like I said, we, you know, I'm pretty sure that Everybody in some form or fashion, they love themselves. You know, so you you got to treat your your other half, you know, the same way. You know, just God don't go for that. So you cannot abuse this privilege. Verse twenty nine. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. I'm sorry. Verse thirty. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Verse thirty one. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. So when you get married, you leave your mother and father, and you become one. You become one flesh. So, you know, you're, that means you guys should be on the same accord. When you first get married, it's going to be a rough patch in the beginning because you guys are getting used to each other ways. You know, it's different when you're dating. When you're dating, you know, you can go home to your own place. But once you get married, you're one now. So it's going to take, it just takes the time. You know, you start figuring out. The likes and dislikes, and it's gonna be disagreements and stuff, but you gotta work it through because marriage is a sacred thing. And before you get married, you gotta make sure this is something you want to do because this is a commitment. You know, it's not no, I'm just gonna, I'm tired of her, 
I'm tired of him and we're going to get divorced. We're going to find that out as well, too. You know, God has things set up a certain kind of way and we're supposed to adhere to it. Man teaches us, well, it's okay. You know, if you're tired of the person or whatever, then you just dump them off and get somebody else. But it's not so, according to the word of God. We're going to skip down to verse 33 now. Ephesians 5, we're going to skip down to verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So, just the same thing. Love your wife as you love yourself, and the wife that she reverence her husband. So, it's go both ways. You know, you, you love your wife, you cherish her, you know, you, you treat her like you treat yourself. You don't abuse her. And it just goes both ways. Because you're the head of the household, it don't mean that you can just take advantage of the wife and just do anything and everything. Because it's not not so. So we're going to go to First Peter now. First Peter three. Like I said, when you when you get into the marriage, whatever, it's like I said, it's gonna be times where it's gonna be hard, but you just gotta work it through because you have to fully understand what it's all about. It's not just you boyfriend and girlfriends no more. Now it's a commitment. You know, so that's a commitment. And you you know, just in the guy's eyes, you know, everything I say, everything is secret is sacred. So Lord, you get married under that covenant, he's the head of the other family, of the household, then it's the male, then it's the female. And it's set up in that order. So you know you know, find out this lesson that divorce is only divorce is on the ground for a certain thing and you just can't do any everything you want to do in this marriage. So, First Peter three, First Peter three, and we're going to read verses five through seven. First Peter three, verses five through seven. Verse five. For after this matter, in the old times, the holy woman also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. Verse six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter ye are as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So you see how Sarah, you know, oh, she called Abraham Lord. Not meaning that he's uh, like God or above, but she just, you know, respected her husband as him being over the household. You know, and Abraham didn't abuse her, but she gave him that respect because she knew that she had understanding that, that Christ is the head. Her husband is under that, and then it's her. So she already knows. So she respected him and did according to the word of God. And how you're supposed to be as a wife. Verse 7. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So your wife is the weaker vessel. So... If that's because she's a weaker vessel, that don't mean that you just, well, I'm the man of this house, I run this, you, mm -mm, you can't do that. You know, because not your wife, although she might be the weaker vessel, but it might be something that she might be smarter at you at too. So you need both, you need, the male need to do his part and the woman need to do her part to make it work. It's going to be something she's going to be a little crappier at than you are. But overall, they don't make you no less of a man to say your wife have a job and she makes more than you. They don't make you less of a man, but she's still a weaker vessel, and you're supposed to do your part, and you treat her with respect, and you treat her the way you want to be treated. So, you, like I said, you cannot abuse this power. You know, so, and a woman, same way, you can't be like, you know, you married, you can't be like, well, you know, I'll wear the pants around here. No, it not work that way. You know, you, you want to be that way, then you just be by yourself. You know, if, you, if you're raising kids by yourself, that's a different story. Well, you have to be the male, the, the father and the mother. But, you know, if you, in the relationship, when you're married and you're under the covenant, you know, you're under the Lord, you get married and stuff, and you let your husband do his job and you do your job. You know, so, like I said, it's a two week straight. It works both ways, you know, to make it work. So, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 7 now. Like I said, marriage is a beautiful thing in the Lord's eyes. You know, a man teaches us like, well, you know, like I said, you get tired of a woman, you ain't got to deal with it. You get tired of a man, you got to deal with it. And, I mean, it's so much crazy stuff going on now. You got the same-sex marriage. You got, you know, um, 
people just, you know, for fornicating and doing all types of stuff. And, you know, God don't like that. You know, so it's best to be, to be married. We're going to find that out as well. It's better to be, to be married. You have to, you know, fall into the trap of this world. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. And we're going to read verses 1 through 16. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 16. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So, you know, it's, it's better to just to be married instead of going around committing fornication. Because that's a sin, and... You are whore money, and there's no place in the kingdom for that. So, verse 2, never left to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Verse 3, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The, the wife have no power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. So, if you're married, you know, your wife shouldn't be uh, turn you down, you know, for sex, basically. And you should do the same way because your body is not your body and her body is not her body. Now, it's different instances where you're not supposed to, you know, her coming on her, her menstrual cycle or you fasting and prayer, pray, fasting and praying. But other than that, though, you're not supposed to defraud each other. Verse 5 Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with a consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer, as I mentioned. And come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Verse 6, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. So, you both have to agree on this. Now, if you decide, well, we don't want to, you know, do this, it's, it's because, because consent, you know, uh, uh, what is it, um, permission. So, you know, it's, it's not a commandment, but still, if you fasten the prayer, and of course, if she's on, on monthly, then you're not supposed to do it. That's just a commandment. You're not supposed to sleep with the woman and shit like that, but... If you fasten and praying, or just for a certain reason, you guys, then it's by permission. But you're not supposed to defraud each other of that. Because your body is not your body, and her body is not her body. Okay, so, verse 7. For I would that all men were even as myself, for every man had his proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widow, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Now, this is Paul talking. Verse 9. But they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. So, if you can't contain, it's better to marry than to burn. Or if, you, if you're not married, then you just, you just gotta have the willpower and not do it. You gotta abstain from fornicating. Because if you're not married, then it's fornicating. No way around it. Verse 10. And unto the married I command, ye not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, but, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. So, if you're married and you get the wife uh, get put away, or she, or she leave her husband, whatever like that, she, she can't go and get married to nobody else while her husband's still alive. I mean, this thing is deep, you know. If it comes to the word of God, you know, there's nothing to be playing with. That's when it comes to this marriage. Verse, uh, I'm gonna read verse 11 again, but if, and, but, and if she departs, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. So if, she, if your wife leaves you, you know, she can't go get married to somebody else, basically. You know, but if she get married to somebody else, she's still committing adultery because you guys are still considered married in Laura's eyes. And she just, she just, just up and leave you. We're gonna find out the only way for that to happen if you're, if you're, if you're dead and she's dead, or somebody could commit adultery, then it is a ground for divorce. We're going to find that in the next few scriptures that exactly what it is.